Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're back once again. We've got Joe behind the camera and today I'm going to be giving you my top tips for young aspiring gymnasts. So stick around till the end of the video for some of my tips. You may find them useful, you may not, but you're going to hear them anyway. So in no particular order, in this list, I'm going to work through things I've drawn from my experience as a gymnast and as a coach and what I look for in gymnasts and what I would advise my gymnasts to do um, and traits and characteristics to hold for them to have the most successful career possible for them. So hoping some people get a little bit of information from this. You may, there may be one thing you get and you think, right, that I'm going to focus on that. But again, it's in no particular order. So let's get on with it. I'm not going to speak in Spanish because I'm going to mess it up. So tip number one, listen to your coaches. Sounds so, so simple. But I remember as a gymnast, there'd be times where my coaches may say something. And when you're in that moment as a gymnast and you're really used to a certain coach and you've had them for a long time, you can often not fully understand the important advice they're actually giving. Um, so what I like to do is I like to reflect. Um, when I was a gymnast, I like to reflect on the feedback I would receive. So without moving on to a different point, from what the coaches tell you, okay, that is going to be very, very purposeful information. Okay, They're not going to be lying to you. So whether it's changing your technique for a skill, they have seen that through their eyes, they've drawn on their experience from all the situations they've been in, whether it's been a gymnast, whether it's been as a coach and all the other gymnasts and coaches and God knows they've worked with, they are giving you an insight into all that information and they are trying to help you become a better gymnast because one, it benefits you, two, it benefits them, three, it is what the aim of a coach is if done and they are fulfilling their role purposefully. So listen to your coaches, starting with a simple one, but it is ever so important and that's probably one of the most important things I would say as a coach. Number two, so next one, and again, one of, I think, I'm gonna say that on every single point, all right, one of the biggest one. Number two is to see the value in your failures. Now, this is something I definitely didn't realize until I was way, way, way through my gymnastics career. And really, all you are learning from uh, the things that don't go well. You always learn from what doesn't go well a lot more than what does go well. So for me, uh, I've spoke about them before. There's a couple of big things I've learned from in my gymnastics career. Again, not getting selected for teams is a massive one and quite a common one you might see. And it's important that you take accountability for why you haven't been picked. Now, in a lot of cases, probably all the cases, there's nothing you, you, you may have been able to do to, to actually change the decision of the coaches. Now the coach in this position is hopefully putting the team's best interests at heart. And sometimes your place in that team may not be what's best for the actual team or for their outcome or for their goal, whatever that team is orientated towards. So it is super important you learn from your failures. Again, we came fourth place at the 2018 European Championships. I would say that was probably one of the biggest learning experiences from my gymnastics career. It taught me so many things. It taught me that it's not always gonna go your, your own way. Sometimes you may have felt you were prepared for something and maybe you fully weren't. It taught me that there's lots of different variables that sometimes you can't control within gymnastics. Again, gymnastics is such a tricky one because a lot of the variables are fixed in the competition. So the internal variables as in the equipment, as in, well, the place you have the comp maybe, or the, the order you're rotating. For that competition, it's gonna be thick, fixed. There may be times where it changes. Um, the things that you can't often control is potentially if you have an illness before or whatever, you can do things to limit it, but sometimes it's just not going to be your day. Okay, so you've got to draw from these experiences, reflect, review, like in the first point, and that is gonna be a big point throughout this video, reflection, but, You've got to review what you've done to go forwards and progress and make yourself a better gymnast as a whole. Okay, number three, 
let yourself be pushed by others, but remember it's your own journey. Now, what I used to do when I was younger is I used to compare myself to other people. Now, a lot of people tell you not to compare yourself to other people. I think that comparison, if used, can sometimes be a good tool. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it is massively positive to always compare yourself to others. I think you can look at other people, and I always say that I often listen to or have the most respect for someone who's been where I want to be or they've done something I want to do. So maybe that was before I, before I competed, someone who's competed for the national team, maybe a coach who's been in the national team setup, maybe they've had that experience. Those people, they're super, super important and influential because if you're not following or listening to people who've been where you want to be, how do you expect to get there? But remember, it is your own journey. Got a nice little quote here. Um, don't know who says it, but the top of one mountain is the bottom of another. And again, that's so, so true. You'll realize as you get a little bit older in life that you work towards a certain goal and your life may feel like that goal is, that's the only part of your life. I mean, when we were working towards a bronze medal at the Europeans or a medal in general, for so many years, I dedicated my life kind of to that goal. So when it happened, it was almost like the most overwhelming experience ever. And you can, can read so much about uh, Olympians that suffer with depression and anxiety after they've achieved their goals because they've put all their eggs in one basket and their whole life has been dedicated to something for such a long amount of time that their identity is often, they often lose it. They lose their identity and they, they, they think that without the sport, I'm not anything else. Uh, without the sport, I'm not the person I used to be. So it's super important to remember that there's always going to be something else. Always going to be something else, which is why tying it in nicely, it is important to remember it is your own journey. What's important to someone else may not be important to you. We were elated and over the moon at winning a third place medal. And for us, that was our gold. For someone else, they may think, oh, that was rubbish. Third, I've, I've won. And that's where I think, that's where I think comparison can be bad because you need to compare correctly the things you want to compare to the right people and things that people don't have to understand why that's your goal people don't have to understand why that's your thing you have to say right okay that's my bit this is what i want this is what i'm doing that is silly if you compare in that instance so remember it's your own journey boom point four go the extra mile now this is an important one because you need to be prepared to put in the work nobody else is prepared to do or others aren't prepared to do to be or to get to the places that nobody else can get to now if you've been successful in gymnastics or whatever it is you do maybe it's a different sport that's not happened by accident you don't suddenly become a british national european champion overnight it doesn't suddenly happen okay so what i mean is by going the extra mile is and i realized this quite early on i was never really naturally talented in gymnastics there was lots of things where, and even if I apply it to rugby as well, there was lots of instances where I was definitely slightly struggling or I would struggle because I wasn't maybe at a certain standard of skills or I wasn't particularly the strongest at the time or I, I had a bit of fear, um, all these common things. Um, and I think it's important, you don't naturally have to be really talented at anything to succeed in that thing. It comes down to how bad you want it uh, and the extra work you put in. So again, a couple of stories I can say. I remember when I was playing rugby as well. Rugby and gymnastics have taught me so much. Uh, I decided that whatever happened, I would always try to be, I'd always try to work my hardest and I would always try to be the most coachable gymnast or rugby player or uh, athlete that there was. So things that I would do to try and set myself apart from the rest would be to be seen doing extra work. Okay, so maybe extra conditioning and training, maybe you're training outside of gym, maybe uh, you're making your coach aware of that. There's loads of examples. There's examples of Ronaldo, for example, when he would use, used to turn up at Man United training hours early and then he'd go home and he'd finish training and he'd still be training, things like that. The extra work you put in is so, so important. And that kind of respect you'll gain from coaches and people in those important places uh, that have an influence on you. And especially when it comes to being picked for teams and your progress as a gymnast in general, these are the things that really, really can set you apart from the rest. But before you even get into the benefits of 
it's actually going to make you improve. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to physically give you an advantage. It gives you so many more benefits and advantages from that as well. So every time you go to training, I remember when we used to go to the national team setup, I would always try to speak to the coaches, um, ask them for pointers on what I could do better. There's probably a lot, so I'm wait, waiting, for, waiting for a few people laughing there, probably lots of things I could, I could always do better. But always ask for the feedback and then always say thank you. It's the same, it's the easiest thing in the world, but a lot of people don't do it. So when we used to play rugby as well, I used to always go up to the coaches and again in, in rugby it's a lot more um, consistent behaviour like this. There'd be lots of people always going up to the coaches at the end after shaking their hand saying thank you and I think that is one of the biggest things you can do. And finally to reiterate that point, it is always better to be consistently good than occasionally great. And that's, again I've heard that, I can't remember where I've heard that from, but that's something that sticks with me a lot because the person that shows up every single day, no matter how they feel, uh, when they're tired, whatever, um, and even if you're working at a low, a low rate, for example, they're gonna do better than the people who don't do a lot, but occasionally they, they can be good. And it's always a long game, because I used to see loads and loads of gymnasts that could not do a lot of training and then can turn up and throw, throw a lot of big skills. Um, but in the long run, it doesn't work out all the time. Next point, your time will come. Again, kind of building on that last point that sometimes you need to realise that if you constantly put the work in and always, always you're turning up, you're putting the work in, you're trying, you commit yourself fully for a prolonged period of time, you will reap the rewards. You will. It's only a matter of time until you win that medal you want, you win that don't know, you, you, uh, you, you achieve that skill, you get that moment that you've been waiting for with your coach where you land your, your biggest skill in, in competition, whatever it is, it's only a matter of time. If you consistently put that work in and you work hard, you will reap the rewards. It's all about trusting the process. And sometimes you've got to realise that there's going to be lots of sessions where you may feel like you're not making progress, and again, progress in gymnastics isn't always linear. People often hinge on the physical progress, the progress they can physically see. There's lots of different types of progress and sometimes the failures and falls you're going through. I mean, gymnastics is a sport that teaches so much about life. You, the literal process of developing learning from the initial stages to the final, the consolidation stages of a skill can show you so many things about life. There's gonna be ups and downs, there's gonna be moments where you feel like you can't do it, there's gonna be moments where you can, there's gonna be moments where you complete the skill and you feel amazing, but it's important to realize that you're not always gonna feel massively positive about it. But if you trust yourself and you trust in the process, it's like anything, you will succeed no matter what, as long as you trust in the process. Next point is, as early as you can, build a good foundation of your physical strength and take accountability for other external factors that are gonna benefit your gymnastics performance, ETC, nutrition, and sleep, recovery, all of that jazz. If you can get a hold of these things outside of the gym, you can often make vast improvements inside the gym. That's why I love working with athletes through JF Coaching, my business, where we work on strength and development athletes, spe specifically gymnasts as well, um, and working on that element of recovery, injury prevention, strength and conditioning, explosive power development, all those key fundamentals that a gymnast needs that necessarily doesn't take part in their technical training in the gym. So if you can get a hold of those key areas, it might not be you need a strength and conditioning coach. If you're seven, you don't need a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, or if you're in recreational gymnastics, you're likely not gonna need a strength conditioning coach, okay? But that doesn't mean you can't develop in your physical ability at home, you can't do extra work, even the things your coaches are telling you to do in your conditioning in the gym, doesn't mean you can do extra in the gym, training, at home, doesn't mean you can start to develop more knowledge surrounding your nutrition, your sleep, and understanding the importance. They are absolutely fundamental in being a good, successful, well-rounded gymnast. Final point is gain different experiences. Now, again, this is super important. I think I always remember different experiences that I had, whether it was with the national team, whether it was with my amazing club 
that brought me up and developed me into the gymnast that I am and was, Scarborough Gymnastics Academy, the trips, anything you can do, camps. Again, it's another reason why I started our camps, Camp Aspire, to provide experiences for lots of gymnasts, whoever can be there to provide experiences for these gymnasts that they may not normally get and so they can learn from other coaches, so they can develop their skills, knowledge, and they can have fun and make friends for life. So gain more experiences. And again, you can do that. There's lots of different ways of gaining different experiences as a gymnast. So we are done. Another video over. I hope that has provided a valuable insight um, and you've got some tips there. All of them, some of them you may find useful um, and hopefully something you can have a think about um, and hopefully reflect on that may help you become a better gymnast or even help the way you approach your training lifestyle towards a gymnast. And again, that's from my perspective as a gymnast and a coach and what I would advise children I work with, gymnasts I coach, um, day to day, camps, etc. That's what I would do. And you're receiving some of that advice in these points. So again, thanks for watching. Thoroughly enjoyed that one. And don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. We've got gaining a, a, a small following currently. Um, but again, we're loving the content, keeping, keeping it coming, flowing nice and fast. Um, comment down below if you've enjoyed the video. Excited for more of the same and different types of content coming soon. Um, check, again, the socials for more information about myself and my business, JF Coaching. Uh, may find it can help you in different ways with the services that we provide and I will see you in the next one. Woo! Boom!